Are you ready? Amazon Warehouse Hiring Day is coming on October 26th. Amazon will host live hiring events in your city to showcase all the reasons why this Amazon Warehouse is the place to work. Things like competitive pay, great benefits, and so much more. Drop in for some swag, bring a friend, and you could even walk away with a job. To find an Amazon Warehouse Hiring Day event close to you, visit Amazon.com slash hiring day. That's Amazon.com slash hiring day. Amazon is an equal opportunity employer. People say he ain't no good. And I'm crazy as a loon. Cause I shave my head in the morning. And pick guitar in the afternoon. Just like old Chief and Charlie. I like to lay around in the shade. Well, I ain't got no money, but you better believe I got it made. Cause I ain't asking nobody for nothing. If I can't get it on my own. If you don't like the way I'm living, just leave this bald-headed country boy alone. What's up, folks? Hey, I want to tell you about our new local sponsors. You hear all the corporate sponsors and everything before, during, and after the show. But these people right here are folks in my community that I actually shop with, work with, do something along those lines with that when they say they want to come on board and be a sponsor of the show, it tickles the hell out of me, and I love them being a part of it. First one I want to tell you all about is Dolly's Delights. Now, this lady right here not only has dealt with me and all my hard-headed friends when it comes to getting tuxes or fitted for weddings or whatever, she always goes above and beyond. Uh, one of my buddies who got married last year, they forgot my shoes. She went somewhere, picked them up for me to make sure that I was looking good and matching everybody else. She also got some great candy and some other stuff in her store. She's got this white trash candy. If you've never ate it, go get it. Go to her store right now and get it. It's awesome. But she goes above and beyond to take care of her customers. And I'm just grateful that she's my friend. I'm grateful she's a sponsor on the show. So y'all do me a favor. Go check out Dolly's Delights. It's on uh, 5122 3rd Avenue in Eastman. The phone number there is 478-231-7237. And tell her that I sent you. If you I know it's tux and wedding season. You're not going to get a better price or a better person that you have to deal with than her. So go check out Dolly's Delights and tell them that I sent you. Now, a couple days ago, I did a show with Miss Lori from Lori's Dive-In over in Alamo. She brought me and Gracie all types of food, even a keto pizza, a cauliflower pizza. I've never ate anything like that before in my life. And let me tell you, it was banging. The wings were amazing. She does this special mix-up with lemon pepper and buffalo, and it's out of this world. Her wings are cooked better than almost any place I've ever been. Um, let's see, what else did she bring us? She brought us fried Oreos. She brought us fried pickles. Uh, the barbecue was awesome. The hamburger was banging. When you go there, too, folks, you can go back and listen to the whole episode between me and her. Her staff is awesome. You feel like you're at home. It's just the best little place around. I know whenever we go through Alamo or I'm going down 16, I'm going to divert myself to go get lunch there. Y'all please go check her out. Her phone number is 912-568-1645. It's on Commerce Street over in Alamo. You can't miss it. It's Lori's Dive In. Go get fed good. Go get treated good. You're not going to get better service from better people anywhere around here. So go check her out now. Let me tell you guys about the baddest insurance agent around these parts, Miss Jenna Carr. She's an alpha insurance agent. She handles home, auto, life, and business. She's located in Macon, Georgia at 3312 Northside Drive, Suite C-160. Uh, let me tell you about Miss Jenna. Not only is she just the sweetest, cutest damn thing you ever seen, but she takes care of business like a true professional. I love dealing with her. Uh, she's done got me hooked up with life insurance. 
because let's be honest, I'm going to need it. And uh, every time I've ever dealt with her, a complete pleasure. So y'all do me a favor now. Give her a call and go look her up on social media. Jenna Carr, Alpha Insurance Agency. And that phone number in Macon is 478-621-7065. Tell her that you need the same package, home, life, auto, all that good stuff that she hooked me up with. This one's a new one. This is a cool new sponsor of our show. DC Trophy Company. Miss Vicki Hardiman. Thank you very much for being a sponsor on the show. Let me tell y'all what she made for me. This woman really likes my show. I really dig her. She made me a podcast trophy for having the number one show in Georgia. It also says number one bleep talker. I bleeped myself. (laughs) Uh, She's awesome. She can handle all your softball, baseball, football, basketball, all your trophy needs. And the work that she does is top notch. Y'all go check her out right now. She also does awards and everything else for schools, for individuals. Um, She just makes the greatest stuff. And if you even own a business and you want to give employee of the month or anything like that, she can do all that stuff as well. So I want y'all to go check her out now at 5122 3rd Avenue, Eastman, Georgia, 31023. That phone number is 478-231-2364. DC Trophy Company. So recently here at the studio, we had a tornado came through. And when it did, we needed a new roof put on. We needed some work done to it. And my dude, Mr. Brad Devane, with Classic Roofing and Construction at 478-832-9229 came and gave me a free estimate, and then they hooked us up. Uh, It was an insurance job, and they took care of it right away, but they also handle out-of-pocket. And what's cool about them, they've got 30 years' experience. They don't collect a single dime until the whole job is done. They do a full walk-around with the homeowner just to make sure that everything is up to the homeowner's standard, and then they collect. I know when we needed them most here at Raising Grace Studios, they did us an amazing job, and I'm glad to have them on board with us. So check out Classic Roofing and Construction now. Give Mr. Brad Devane a call at 478-832-9229. That is classic roofing and construction. You guys want to know where I go to have a good time in making when I'm also wanting to get some good food and listen to some good music? I go down to Cashman's Pub at 370 Cherry Street in Macon, Georgia. Every time me and my buddies go there, no matter who it is, they've got a really good band playing. I'll tell y'all this. I love their buffalo chicken wraps. Plus, they have Buffalo Trace, one of the few bars around that carries it. So you're going to get the best drinks, good damn service, with good people. I know that I enjoy it, and all my friends do nothing but brag about it. Every Friday and Saturday, you can catch us there, but also we go there during the week when we get a wild hair. I know I can catch all my Bulldogs games, all my Braves games, and any NFL games there. They're going to have them on the TV. They're going to have drink specials. And it's just going to be a great environment for you to laugh, cut up, have fun with your friends. To me, it's my favorite little spot in Macon. If you don't know about it, go order one of their shot specials and tell them that I sent you. That is Cashman's Pub down on Cherry Street, Macon, Georgia. Phone number. 478-219-9703. Y'all go run a bar tab up and tell the bartenders that the Josh Terry podcast said, hey, what's up, Grunny? Uh, Hey, everybody. I didn't even enter the show. I didn't even enter the fucking show. Uh, So if you can't tell me, Macy's already talking shit to each other today. So thank you for tuning in to the Josh Terry podcast. Uh, me and you both have had shitty mornings, but yours, uh, yeah. yours seems a little bit worse. God, I, okay. So Garrison missed the bus this morning. Okay. So, and he made it out there, but she shut the door cause he was running out. So she shut the door and drove off. So he's standing in the yard crying. And then, so I have to get him ready, get Gracelyn up. And she's like me in the morning. She's not nice. So I have to get her up, get her ready fast as I can run him to school, run her to Clinton, run back. I ran out of gas at my neighbor's house, like only one house down, but it's uphill to my house. 
So I pushed the car to my driveway. <laughs> and I called my neighbor and I was like, can you send one of your kids out here to help me turn this car into my driveway? And then, yeah, I just had somebody bring me some gas. Yeah. Well, that's, that's very nice. Uh, as soon as I, I have been, uh, I've been on the go since I woke up this morning and, uh, I've argued with a Mexican cleaning lady. Um, oh, no. yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm going to have like, uh, I don't know. There's going to be something at my house when I get back and I'm not going to be happy with it. I just don't know what the fuck it's going to be yet. I know arguing with her was great. Cause they're really, really good at like making you feel like you're a horrible person. Okay, I don't know if you've ever heard me say this before, but like I got a little bit of racism in me. Not much. Mm -hmm. No, I don't mean to. It just it's the way I was raised. Every once in a while it wants to poke its ugly little head, but not <laughs> but not in the way that most people do it. Like my granddaddy, uh, who owns a drywall company with my dad, has had a lot of uh Spanish people, Mexican people working for him at throughout the years. And my granddaddy has instilled in me that just because they don't speak the same language as you doesn't mean you can't holler at the top of your lungs and they won't understand. Uh, you know, that's a common misconception, actually. If yeah, you yeah, talk yeah. louder, they know what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, and they don't. They actually, <laughs> and, but I've always seen my granddaddy do it, and I guess it's just instilled in me that when I don't understand you or you don't understand me, I think that it's just okay to raise my racist voice. So, like, this woman comes to my house. This is the second time she's cleaned it. And first time, she kind of bitched at the end. Like, I couldn't tell what she was saying or whatever. But, she like, I paid her what she said. And mm -hmm. then today, my house is destroyed. Like, my dogs, they, they I don't know what happened, but they just decided to say, fuck my house. Mm -hmm. and, and just wanted to go ham, ham one day this week. And yeah. uh, so, she gets there this morning. And uh, she look, comes in the house or whatever as I'm about to leave or whatever. And she stops me. She said, Mr. Terry, Mr. Terry. And I, and I walk back into the house. I'm like, uh, what's wrong? You know, you have all your shit. There's money on the counter. You know, I'm even trusting you and leaving the money here before you clean it. And, <laughs> what do you uh, need from me? Yeah, and she was like, no, no. And I, I thought she was saying something else but i now looking back at her on the way here i was like she was saying not enough i don't uh -huh. know yeah not not enough not enough and uh i was like no agreed like she just she was pointing at the fucking money and i was like no this is for you like you know when you get done <laughs> take it you know this is, this is yours i didn't just i didn't just leave you know some money laid on the counter you know, do your job first and then take the fucking money. Go do with it what you will. I don't care. Oh, God. And she's kept, she's kept fucking pointing at it. And now I kind of got it. Like She's like, oh, no, no, this is no good. She was like, your house too dirty. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, and what's bad is, like, I got people that are coming over later because we're going to a concert too tonight. And uh, this is like my house has to be clean. So now – if my house isn't clean when I get back, because she was there when I left. It's just we had a heated exchange uh, beforehand. And I don't even know if she thought it was heated. She probably just thinks I'm fucking stupid and I was hollering. Honestly. Yeah, like she, yeah she probably, she's probably going to clean half the house is what I'm yep. figuring. She's going to do enough to get that amount of money, and then she's going to leave. Yeah, she's going to say, I'm going to do what, what this is worth. Yeah, and but in all honesty, this is where I'm a piece of shit. I still thought that was a lot of money to her kind. I thought that I thought oh my God. I thought that she was going to be like, fine, like I'm happy with this. I am. I like, but she's like straight from Mexico, like right now. Like she hasn't been oh. here long. And the reason I say that, I'm not being super racist or anything when I say that. It's they send money back home, like so. That, right. Yeah. So a hundred dollars here is like fucking a trillion there. Not really, but it's a lot of fucking pesos. And <laughs> I, I still thought she would be happy. I thought like I was paying a mortgage or some shit down there and a little shanty. Isn't uh, one peso like $20? I could not tell you. I think, no, I think it, one peso. It would, be, it would be the inverse. It would be like $1 would be 20 pesos. Yeah, because their, their currency is less. Oh, than, yeah. Their currency is less than our currency. Okay. 
That's what, one of our dollars would be 20 of their pesos. Yeah, that's why they do so much cheaper labor than we do. And they're like, oh, I'm happy. Yeah. I, I still thought she'd be happy. Uh, she was not. Well, I'm telling you what, cleaning ladies are way more expensive now than they used to be. Oh, yeah, you can't use the white women. I oh, God, no. No, you can't. I don't know what the fuck they think they're doing. Like, uh-uh. I saw a post this morning from somebody. It's funny that we're talking about this. This is a full-blown honky what cleaning lady. And she was like, just because I come to clean your house, this is not a sex act or a sex ad. Well, I guess some old dude probably propositioned this uh-huh. woman after cleaning her house, after cleaning his house, and be like, so, you know, you want to make a couple extra bucks? That is so many old guys' fantasies, though. The a cleaning lady? Yeah, to be screwing their cleaning lady. They feel like they're doing something they're not supposed to be doing. I wouldn't want to screw my cleaning lady. Like, I've seen my house. Like, that's some that's some fucking manual labor. You would have to shower. <laughs> I first, I don't want a pretty cleaning lady. I want a bitch that looks like Big Burfa in there scrubbing and cleaning the shit out of it. I want somebody yeah. angry at their husband before they come that's clean my right. house. Scrubbing them baseboards, baby. You Just get in them cabinets. Fucking getting you in there. You see that cobweb man. way up there? Add yeah. an extension to your Swiffer. That's right. Yeah. But, felt that. Oh, uh, God, I'm going to get back in all my shit. It's going to be pond. I already know it. <laughs> That's what's going to happen. Like, she's going to block your number. Yeah. She's going to. You're never going to hear from her again. She's going to take the money and then she's going to get like my fucking 70 inch flat screen for extra payment. Yep. She has already called her cousin to come oh, yeah. just swipe everything from your house. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I hope, like, and I also didn't think about this the first time, like, she cleaned my house. Somebody got me a sign one point in time. I don't know where they found it at. But you have I think you've heard what I call my undercarriage. What I, what uh-huh. I, okay. So, it's Pedro, right? So, yeah. I, I have a sign in my bedroom that says, Pedro lives here. And I did not think about that. But if she didn't say anything at the first time, like, well, I don't, I don't think that would be offensive. I don't know many. I don't know why she wouldn't. <laughs> I, I just look. This looks like everything with me is like undertone of racism. Like it, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. Like if I say something and I don't even mean it in a bad way, somebody's gonna be like, "No, oh, that's racism." You're you're a very offensive man. I don't care. <laughs> I don't, like your I, personality is offensive. <laughs> I just don't give a shit anymore. And the older I get, the more I just don't give a shit. And what's really ruined me lately is I've started watching uh, like older comedy specials uh, of some of the people like I really fucking adore as comedians. Oh, yeah. And I realize that I'm not that much of an asshole <laughs> that they pretty much. Who are you looking at? people i just got here oh okay it confused me i saw who are you looking at i saw a shadow go across your face and then i was like do you have ghosts yeah i do have ghosts also but hi hi, people okay i said hi people (laughs) love you be careful but uh so yeah um i don't mean to but i started watching these comedy (laughs) specials and i realized they said way more hateful shit than i ever have and it was funny because people knew that wasn't real. Like I said, some fucked up shit to you. Now I've only made you cry one time that I know of. Uh, yeah, the chicken nose thing. Yeah, but I had no idea you were traumatized by that shit. Yeah, man. I, I got called peacock in middle school for my nose because it moves down a little whenever I smile. So it kind of looks like a hook. No, and I was d- smiling no. whenever you said I had a chicken nose. And I was like, oh, no, it's real. <laughs> no, I honestly, that was just a very shitty coincidence on my part. I don't, oh, that was funny. Crying in the club. It's okay. I usually cry when I'm leaving. <laughs> no, I legit felt so bad about that though. I never like okay. I never like to fuck with somebody's insecurities like that I like. Yeah. If I don't like you, then I'll attack your insecurities all day. Um, but like with you, I was just like, no, that was funny the way you were dancing. Like you were doing the chicken dance and, or whatever it was, like you were doing the the thing. And I was like, oh, that's cute. That's cute as fuck. And then I said, whatever I said to you, and you just fucking, the trauma from middle school at one time, three years of trauma from middle school, just fucking whapped, whapped your ass. Right in the face. 
and it and I just happened to be the guy that said it, and I was just like, "Oh my god, this bitch hates What's me." What's funny is that hurt my feelings all through middle school, and then I got a lot more com- or I got kind of more confident through high school, and then out of high school, I got to where I realized like there was actually no standard of beauty. And so I completely forgot about the fact that that was an insecurity of mine. And then you said, you said, and I quote, your little chicken nose. And I just went, (gasps) people still notice. Oh, God, I'm not as pretty as I thought I was. (laughs) Oh, fuck you. Yes, you are. Uh, As it was, it was hilarious Uh, to me when it was coming Uh, out of my mouth. But you ever seen like the mimes? And you know how like, the mom's yeah. got like the invisible walls or whatever, yeah. and like, they'll put her face up to it and make it. Yeah. I, I felt like when I said that to you, you walked into an invisible fucking wall. Yeah. It just, really? you, you stopped in your tracks. I just stopped. And you was, I was dancing. I know. You were just fucking getting jiggy with it. And the next thing you know, they say, no, call him my therapist. Like, it's, Josh has fucked oh, me up. God. And it's funny now, but man. It was not funny then. That's the only I felt horrible. I, <laughs> I was I forgive you. No, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh no, it's it's fucking bad. Um <laughs> I still feel bad. It's okay. <laughs> not mad at you. I didn't know I could feel bad anymore. <clears throat> I you do have feelings. I know, I hate them. Yep. You do I know, that. I know. I feel bad for that, but not just screaming at a little poor Mexican lady cleaning my house that is Honestly, fucking miserable right now. Let's revisit your values. I've, I don't think I'm a good person anymore. <laughs> you're a good. You're a good person. Way deep down, Justin. It's deep down. I have a, <laughs> I have a very hard exterior. Good God. Hard so, to get through. So, what concert are you going to tonight? I'm going to the Coetzel concert. Trey Lewis is one of the openers. Yep. So, um, yeah, I'm going. So, Trey is getting me and Amber in, and then we're just going to hang out backstage and meet everybody. And um, I get to meet his manager, which I'm really excited about because I'm looking for a manager. So, I would, I'm, like, hoping to get some good connections out of that. It's Alex, right? No, this it's, a, it's an odd name. It's like... It's like Matt. it's not a common name that I've heard. It's not Matt Braille, is it? I've heard a Matt name, but that's that is cool. Matt... Oh no, 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 no! It is because that's what he said yesterday. He called me and said Braille will text you the details yeah. for the concert. He's cool, dude. I've only been around him like twice. Uh, whenever mm-hmm. Trey did the show for me in uh that Crazy Bull in Macon, like the big, like right before, that no, was in twenty twenty. So it's been a hot minute, but uh, he was cool as fuck. I like, I like, I like. Yeah, I'm, doing, I'm excited. I'm doing a show with them on Monday. Um, that's why I wish. Oh, her- yeah, because you're going to already be in Nashville. Yeah, I hate that you're not getting there till Wednesday. I know. I wish you could come. If, if anything happens, you can come early. We have room for you just to come stay with us. I know I would, but Gerson's got Boy Scouts on Sunday night. And then I haven't, so I had them last weekend and I didn't have them from Monday to yesterday. I got them yesterday evening. And then I'll have them until Wednesday. But okay. and if I leave on Monday, then I'll only have them from you gotcha. know, now to, to Sunday. So. Well, if anything happens next week, I got Trey Lewis on Monday. I got Jesse Keith Whitley and everybody. We're doing a group show Tuesday. Then we're going to watch Justin Dukes at Nashville Palace at six. Uh, mm. And then that's just going to be a whole shit show of a night. Uh, so is that Nashville Palace on Tuesday? Yeah, so we're recording a show. Uh, me, Blaine, some more, more folks, uh, Jesse, all of us are recording a show together at lunch or about two, and then we're going to go directly from there to Nashville Palace. Um, and then Wednesday, I wanted to see if you knew these folks because I, I unfortunately, you know that I don't follow a lot of people. Um, right. But some folks, whenever I make these videos about, like, hey, who wants to do a show when we come to Nashville and all this kind of stuff, these uh, these people reached out to me. And um, they have a really cool story from what I've seen. Uh, the wife started putting her husband to singing in the kitchen or whatever all over social media, and they blew up. And now he's got – I don't know if he's got a deal or anything, but he's uh, they're going to be in Nashville, and they reached out to me. Um, oh, cool. Caleb, is it Caleb Austin? Yeah. Caleb Austin is the dude, and his wife is, uh, she's the one that messaged me. 
Um, Let me look it up. Yeah, look them up real fast because their story. I'm really excited to have their story on. Um, it just seems like the wife has really promoted her husband in a really cool, unique way. I and, love that. And uh, where the fuck are they at? Because I'm excited. Oh, I see him, Caleb Austin Music. Yeah, and then the the woman. She, I'm trying to find her. Uh, she's got a holy fuck, cow. They're so cute. Yeah, that she's got like a really big following too. Um, hey, let's see, where are you? Oh, at? yeah, she's she's one to she's yeah. 1.2 million. Yeah, I didn't know if you'd ever seen them before. They, I seem like oh, her name is Cheyenne. Yeah, they're getting in Wednesday afternoon, and mm -hmm. uh, I'll be recording with them Wednesday afternoon. And then Thursday, you know, we got live oak. I don't even know who I've invited yet. I don't even know if I've invited anybody yet. I know Skinny's gonna be there. Oh, um, <gasps> Skinny's gonna be a live oak. Skinny's Amber be asked me, yeah, did she? Amber, yeah, she Amber, like, are we gonna see skinny? Amber, Amber's the one dragging around that dump truck, isn't she? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that. I remember that thing walking up the stairs. And we're we're really excited for Amber to be with us this time. I mean, obviously, we've been excited every time we've had Amber with us, yeah. but this time, Amber has no anything, no situation chip or anything going on at home, so she doesn't feel like. She's going to bother anybody by doing anything or posting anything on social media or whatever. Cause she's always been reserved because she didn't want to, you know, upset her significant other and she no longer is in that situation. So it's just going to be free Amber in Nashville this time. I'm so excited. Oh, I'll, I'll find out how free she is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you better be careful, Doc Terry. She, she better be careful. She's going to fuck around and catch both inches. Fuck around and find out. Hey, I ain't playing. Uh, ten minute roller coaster. Ten minutes. <laughs> well, it depends on if I've been drinking or not. <laughs> if I've been drinking, I'm gonna end up making them noises like you pushing that car this morning. Oh God, yeah, that that would be horrible. Yeah, you're oh. gonna you're gonna definitely regret. You're gonna regret. Now, it. me and Amber, in all seriousness, me and Amber have made a deal. Um, it, we are purely single girls, no looking for nothing, nobody. Please don't. She's buying my drinks and I'm buying hers. If my ass is taking buy me a drink, I'm gonna tell them no. Thank you. That means I believe with a little bit more money than I'm supposed to. That's right. No, no, no. You can buy me a drink. Yeah, that's, that's what I fucking figured. Uh, <laughs> I didn't buy anybody else. <laughs> uh, uh, no, I'm glad. I'm glad that you have that mindset this time because I could have kicked your yeah. ass last time. Um, hey, that really like overshadowed the whole trip. Yeah. No shit. Yeah. Uh, not cool. You're supposed to be like my pretend girlfriend mistress i don't know what the fuck to call you when you're oh, around really? yeah yeah he's, and he's like no fuck josh the entire time you remember that texas podcast where um i think it was david was like what is going on here y'all flirt I, so much yeah but that was the first time me and you have been around each other like i tried yeah, to but we're still that flirty yeah you know, we had ty very uncomfortable did we yeah, because you come up to me and you had your arm around me and you're like, you know, I fucking love you. And I was like, I fucking love you, Josh. Thank you so much for everything. And you were like, no, nah, it's you. You're special. And he was just like, Josh wants you. And I was like, I can assure you that is the last person in Nashville that wants me. But go off. Yeah, I would say this. And I've I've talked about it before on the show. And maybe me, you haven't talked about it for a show. There's been one day that I wanted you. And that was the first mm -hmm. day in Texas. And, and after that, I was like, you know what? This is in every way, shape, or form a bad idea. And I'm going to torture. I'm going to torture myself for a little bit with this. But then, mm -hmm. but then it's just going to be like, oh, this is my bestie. I love her. I know. Now look at us. Yeah. You never would have thought. No, 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 no. I could have, I could have definitely killed you in Texas for a day or two. Uh, <coughs> I was just fucking with you. Um, but no, I didn't realize I made him uncomfortable. That is okay. There's, there's no, uh, no qualms there. You make whoever uncomfortable you want to make uncomfortable. I mean, I'm not saying that I would ever do anything different. Don't get me wrong. Because I'm, right. not, I'm not going. It's the same way when I make the fucking a shitty joke or it sounds like I'm going over the board with it. I don't do anything in a hateful way. So even like right. I, I wasn't fucking walking up to you or, or whoever, put my arm around them and be sweet to them or nice to them, thinking that, I don't think that I'm flirting with you when I do it. Yeah, well, you don't ever have bad intentions. Exactly. That's the thing. Like, there's a lot that you are, you know, you are crass and you are, you do like say things that other people are probably like, what the heck? But 
you truly never do anything with bad intentions. No. no. I mean, unless somebody has for real fuck you over. Yeah, yeah, but they can go fuck themselves if that's okay. Yeah. Like, uh, you, I, if you ever, br- I hope you never see it. Uh, if you bring on like my wrath side, mm-hmm. I have a lot of animosity towards women from me being younger and being the fugly kid, the poor kid. And women not paying attention and being picked on. Like, yeah. So now it's where I don't care that men hate me. That means fucking nothing to me. I don't give a fuck about that. But like when you get this like a, a woman now that is just kind of thinking her shit don't stink or thinking that she's going to speak to me any type of way. I'm like, oh, hold up, bitch. Like, <laughs> like, like if you want to hurt we're some, not gonna do that no nah, if you want to hurt some feelings and you want to be a mean girl i'll be a mean girl right fucking back <laughs> I will. you can't sit with us no no i will go i really hate that i'm that way even like when i got that cease and desist letter uh, a couple weeks ago and was dealing with all that bullshit I, I had in my head the whole time and it's probably completely unhealthy I didn't want to get even with these people. I I wanted to one up them so bad that they never fucked with me again. You were going ham. Oh, you don't even know. When I tell you some stuff like off air and everything, or Mm -hmm. or when we're in Nashville or whatever. Oh, yeah. Well, I guess I I don't like being that way, but I'm going to prove a point when I get that way, regardless of who I'm dealing with, man, woman, Whoever, you're not going to think that you can get over on me if I think I'm in the right. Now, if I've done something stupid, I'll probably bow down at some point in time. But if I think I'm right, goddamn, I'm going to the grave with it. <laughs> you're gonna die on this hill. Yeah, yeah no shit. Uh, so I know, uh, I know that uh, you're excited about seeing Trey uh, and them tonight. Yeah. But what about Wetzel? I'm nervous. You are. Because I think I'm going to, like, clam up. And Amber made a joke yesterday. She said I was going to go up to him and shake or like, I can't even talk now. She said I was going to go up to him and, like, hold my hand out to shake his hand and be like, happy birthday. (laughs) You know that you, like, I like him, not just because of his music, but he seems like the type of dude I could fucking chill with, like, get drunk with. He seems like our type of person. I don't think think you're going to be that way. I don't think he gives that off in person. Yeah. I mean, if you watch his TikTok videos, like the clips that yeah. people get of him just hanging out in his tour bus and stuff, he looks so like personable and just fun. So First, I'm, I'm very excited, but I'm uh, very nervous. I like the fact that I feel like if me and him went to the beach together, I've got a better body than he does. But. <laughs> I don't want to go around Riley Green. Like I don't want to go. I don't want to go to the beach with Riley fucking Green. I don't want to hang out with Riley Green. As much as I like his music, I think he's a fucking cool ass dude. I don't want to be around Riley Green. He looks like fucking <laughs> Thor. Me, <laughs> me and Wetzel look like Fat Thor. Let's so it's just like, but we're we just both got beer bellies and we're broad. Somebody, yeah, you're t- just bigger. Yeah. Somebody told me the other day they were like. Uh, it was a girl. She's like, I don't understand why all these women like Co Wetzel. If uh, and if he did not sing, and you saw him at a gas station, that bitch is definitely a truck driver. And I did, I can't unsee it now. I, no, I, I'm gonna tell you what. Somebody said that to me the other day. Somebody, not that exactly, but somebody was like, he is not cute. And I was like, hold on now. Look at the man's face. Let's let's take away like the long hair, but whenever it's pulled back, it's hot. But his face is very pretty. Like, he has a very soft, featured face. He's got pretty lips. He's got pretty cheeks. He has pretty eyes. Like, Cowboys was pretty, like, in a pretty girl way. I don't think he's pretty. I think he's trashy in a cool fucking way, and that's what you like about him. He's not going to be it. He's not. I'm he, automatically attracted to trash. He's not. <laughs> but I'm trash. Like, I like people that are like him that aren't picture perfect, I guess. Like, yeah. that's what I dig about him and Hardy. Like Hardy, I'm very much not attracted to Chad. With what? I'm not attracted to like a Chad or a Brad or a Kyle, like uh, the college frat boys. Oh, uh, I don't know where the fuck you were going with that. Like Kendall, pretty is not hot to me at all. Yeah, I don't, I don't get that. I don't get that. I don't know how women want somebody that looks like it takes just as much effort to get ready as they mm. as them. 
I, I imagine like I could go on a bender with Wetzel. Like, yeah. I, I imagine me and him could fucking do some damage. Yeah, I would be toe to toe on who would like knock out first. Yeah. And it would take three days. Oh, absolutely. That's what I'm scared. Yeah. That's what I'm scared about for this trip in Nashville, being there a whole week this time. Cause uh, I've made up my mind. Like, I'm going to go out some of the time that I'm there or whatever, but there's so many people that literally want to come hang out like at the Airbnb and drink and stuff mm-hmm. like that and sit around and pick and play and record some stuff and, and all this kind of shit. So, like, I, I'm kind of, like, picking and choosing what nights that I go. And uh, I just feel like next week is going to be one of those weeks that I, I'm going to uh, – there's a good chance that my liver is going to shut down. Yeah, well, I mean, you remember Panama City, about the last day, you were, like, ready to die. Like, you hated everything. Well, I look back at that, too. I ate way too many Adipex. The, that, yes. that I ate way too many Adipex the day before. And I think that's why I was so shaky and felt so horrible that last day. But it was Jess's fault. She wow. she, she brought that fucking bottle of tequila, and I started taking oh, shots yeah. of Patron at like 9 o'clock in the morning. She came in there and woke me up playing Keith Whitley because she knew that's what was going to wake me up. Right. It, that was this instant drink the second I get up. And I usually – eat first i usually kind of do some maintenance i usually take some pedialyte some ibuprofen some uh biolites and all that kind of stuff yeah and I, I didn't do any of that that day i remember the look of relief on your face when i was like i bought you biolite it's in the fridge like you looked at me like i had just saved your parents <laughs> yeah yeah i probably felt like you did at the time <laughs> I, I don't tell you that last day was rough and i look back at the videos like, um, especially the ones they got that last night. Uh, you wasn't in the car. Yeah. You wasn't in the car with us. I wasn't in the car with y'all, but dude, that we put you in a car so fast. We were like, first Uber, like everybody ordering an Uber, and the first one that gets here just put Josh in. He's yeah. about to fall out. I was done. I you was were done, done. 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 I've never seen you like that. Uh, I didn't eat, and I drank so much tequila that day. I drank. Yeah, and Ooh. we were at whatever it was some little beach bar or something and it had crappy food but i was like josh eat some fries or something and you were just like "Mm." and i was like look i have a rum a lot and you were like "Mm." i was trying so hard i was like come on chicken tender put it in front of your face okay so i don't even remember being at a shitty beach bar it was crap like the food was absolute crap but we all ate because we needed to it's not the one that taylor was dancing in the rain at no uh -uh, no no this was like I think this was whenever we were on the way to see Dom and Rick at the Tin Roof. Yeah. No. I don't know. The night that we walked in the rain. We walked, we all in, the walked rain? in the rain? Oh, God. Yeah, we all walked in the rain because Gypsy was like, it's fine. Walking in the rain is good for you. But then it started pouring, and we were at that oh, point walking in the oh, pouring rain. Oh, okay. Completely remember. <laughs> Uh, we, yeah, cause we started off going to like wanting to go to pineapple, Will- not pineapple willies. Uh, no, it was pineapple willies. That's where we wanted. No, no, no. The hot dog place. Yeah. That's what it was. And like where we were going to go eat was closed. Mm-hmm. So then we just had to settle for whatever we could get. Yeah. And we just found it and we walked in and you had to get in line and order your tray. And it was I got tray. food there, didn't I? Mm-mm. I was hanging, you were eating off of Jess's plate or no. Yeah, I think you were eating off of Jess's plate, and I was just, like, hanging chicken tenders in front of your face, like, please eat a chicken tender, and you were like, mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, I, I spend get... a lot of our trips trying to make you eat. Yeah, see, that's what people, people think that I drink all the time when I'm home, because, like, when we're on vacation and shit, or we're on trips, I drink a certain way on a trip. I, I drink, like, there's a good chance somebody's going to have the best slide of my life, or I'm going to end up in the ER. All right, it, <laughs> Either way, I'm going to go to the extreme and I'm going to have a great time because, like, this is hard to – you might understand this better than anybody. You are my people. Dustin's my people. The people that live around me here now, I love them to death. I would do anything for them. Some of my best friends in the world. They don't Mm -hmm. live the life we live. So they don't want to do the things that I want to do. Like, when they go to the beach or something – they're going to want to be doing the touristy shit or doing whatever. I literally rented a beach house just to be around my friends. 
Right. I, yeah. I, I don't care whether I believe that all of us could get together fucking in the shittiest place in the world. And we're still going to have a good time. You give us alcohol, a radio and, uh, you know, whatever. Like, I think that's 100%. all we need. Yeah. You know, my favorite part of Panama City was truly my favorite part. All the, you know, we did the party and then the singing and whatever. But my favorite part was every morning when I would wake up, there would already be a handful of people sitting outside with a cup of coffee. Yeah. And so I would just go join, you know, the that's table cute. outside by the pool and have a cup of coffee. And that was my favorite part because that's where we're all just kind of like enjoying each other's company organically. Nobody's drunk yet. Nobody's, you know, dancing and being crazy. Now, the getting drunk part was fun. And the, um, whenever Dom got there, that was. Yeah, I love Dom. Uh, she is one of my, she's one of my favorite so people. She's freaking funny. Yeah, she's, her give a fuck is none. None, yeah. None. Like she just says what she thinks, and my my what I loved was whenever she was sitting by me and she laughed so hard that she snorted, and then and I told her I saw it, and she was cracking up so hard, and she never like anybody who has any grade of self confidence issues would have been like, oh my god, I'm so embarrassed. She was like laughing with me about the fact that, that happened, yeah. and then the next day was the same thing. She was like, remember yesterday I snorted, and then we laughed about it again. She's so fucking funny. I love her. Yeah, Dom is special to me. Uh, I we've known each other for a long time, and she's one of those people that even before I worked in radio, like she gave a fuck about me. Like those are the people that I near and dear care about. Like we became friends through Tucker and and Tyler Branch and some more folks, and the people that gave a fuck about me before anything. There's just something different about, especially if they're musicians. Like I, that's where I'm just like, oh, I will go above and beyond. I will go to bat, my friend. I, I will fucking do what I will walk through hell for you. Well, like, there's, yeah. there's something special about that to me. Well, people who love you during the come up are kind of like they feel like a route to a belief that you know, it, you're not just getting this love and attention because of what you have accomplished. Yeah, I always like when somebody says, and I'm here, I know that you have to hear this. Like somebody always, every once in a while, I'll say, I knew you were going to do something because of your personality. I, I, yeah. knew, I knew you were going to do something because of your personality, but I didn't know what it was going to be. Yeah. And this is like, okay, okay, I'm, I can, I can respect that. Uh, there's some people, though, I think I know I've told you this before, the ones that just all of a sudden now want to be my friend. And they've never yeah. wanted to be my friend. Not the people from social media. People from social media, you're just meeting them, whatever. Right. That, that's fine. You you wouldn't. Well, I've got. There's people like here, and like all of a yeah. sudden, like all of a sudden in my hometown or next to it, they're like, oh, I want to be your pal. Well, I you want know how many DMs I get. The people that are like, hey, do you remember me? We went to high school together. Really? Don't start. Yeah. Yeah. See, I'm too. We're too far out of high school. Like. It, I'm I, I'm 17 years out of high school. I'm almost. Well, the here. way I think about it is, you don't know me anymore. Yeah, yeah. I'm not the same person as I was five years ago. I'm not the same person as I, as I was a year ago. You knew yeah. me in February, and what was that? Yeah, you've oh, grown. You crazy. you have grown a lot since then. I'm very oh, proud of you. Lot. Speaking Growing of that, pain. as much shit as I give you, I'm going to compliment you now on two things. Oh, yay. First off. I know you're putting out music now and you're working hard on that and you're chasing yeah. your dream. Very fucking proud of you for that. You got Thank the, you. you got the, it's diamonds and ditches, right? Uh, ditches for a diamond. Ditches for a diamond. <laughs> I'm dyslexic. Um, That's okay. <laughs> okay. But it's coming out Sunday, right? Yes. So it comes out on Sunday. There's already a pre save. Um, it's so whenever you are actually able to see it whenever it comes up or whenever it comes out, it's, it says ditches for a diamond and then it says the kitchen table demo. And this so far is the proudest I've been of myself because I, this song is completely written by me. And also I just literally recorded it on a microphone that I plugged into my laptop at it. my kitchen table. I so I'm putting out a song that is, I'm the only person that's ever touched it. So it's not perfect at all, but. I, but that's I'm probably, that's probably, what's one of my all time favorite songs? Uh. You've had to hear it. It's Keith Whitley's song. You've had to hear it a million oh, I, times. Well, I know it's Keith Whitley. Tell Lori I love I don't know. 
Tell yeah, her. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, and that that is his that is his easy little recorded at one yeah. time, right? And it was just like a like a work day. It's, it was three weeks before he he died or whatever. Yeah. But, but yeah, like it's not perfect and it's still an all time song. It's beautiful. Yeah. So like, don't you don't have to have full fucking production for it to be a good song yeah. or for it to be special. Yeah. You, you don't have to if it's if people are gonna relate with it and it's gonna touch them, it's gonna touch them. Yeah. Well, I listened back to it yesterday in the car and I had Garrison hadn't heard it yet. And so I played it for Garrison and he's my, my kid is so sweet. He's, he's seven years old, but he's so tenderhearted. And so like, I have a song that I've been working on. It's called mama coming home. And you, you've seen that. Cause I, yeah. I sent you, um, I like, it. That. I, well, I like it very much. Well, I'll send you the work tape that I put together yesterday. It's, it, um, it's got music to it now. Rick Purdue listen to the tape that I sent, how I wanted it to sound, and then sent me over the music. So I made the, the work tape yesterday. But um, Garrison heard Mama coming home and just was, like, in tears. Oh. And and he was like, Mama, I love you so much. You're so good. And just, he's so sweet to me. And so I played Dishes for a Diamond yesterday, and I heard things that I wanted to change about it and heavily considered taking it down and being like, all right, let's just fix this because I'm not in love. Like, I think I could change the vocals a little bit. I think I could change this or that. And, um, it quit playing and Garrison said, my God, mama, that's going to be on the radio. That's so pretty. And I was like, well, it's going up. We're not changing anything. You're, you're probably overthinking it. You're, you're, you're yeah, probably, I'm sure I am. Yeah, I, you're well, one thing that like some of the people that I've started writing with and everything have told me, I'm really bad about not wanting to express to somebody that I want to write with them. If I think that they are more seasoned than I am. Oh yeah. And because I, th- I feel like I, I keep telling, like, especially Lee, uh, I, I told him the other day, I, we somehow we got to talking about writing something together. And uh, I was like, dude, I don't want to ask you to write with you. And he's like, why? Right. And I said, because I feel like I'm JV at best in high school right. and you're in the minor somewhere knocking on big league door to get a publishing deal. Like, yep. I feel like it is disrespectful for me to say, hey, you want to write? Like, yeah, and he was, and he was like, "You stupid bitch!" Like, <laughs> f- first off, I'm. He said, "You're not jaded by what everybody else has ever told you when it comes to it, so you're probably going to come up with something that could work or wouldn't." But you, that there's you, what I've done so far by myself. And he's like, "It's fine." He's like, "For a beginner, it's really good." And he's like, "When you add other people to the room." There's no telling what he said. Don't be scared to express yourself or say something. We say shit all the time and none of it fucking works. But the ones, yeah. but the ones that do, he's like, I'll write a hundred songs. One of them might be where somebody might want to buy it and record it and release it. He's like, you got to do that. Dustin Heron's told me the same thing. You just got to write. Right. Yeah. Well, Dustin Heron got on to me because he messaged me and he was like, I'm still waiting for you to say you're ready to write because we started that wrong. That song Roots. Yeah, and he was like, "Hit me up as soon as you want to do a right." And I finally messaged him the other day, and I was like, "Dustin, I have to be honest with you. Every time I decide that I want to reach out to you and start working on this song, I get so nervous because you are such a good songwriter, and yeah. I do not feel like I'm going to contribute to that at all." And he was like, "Hush, and if we hurry, we can have a duet done by Thanksgiving." <laughs> yeah, that's a yeah. I, he's right though. I mean, that's. That's how we, that's how you definitely got to be, especially you singing. Yeah. Um, well, it's, it's hard not to like just try to, I don't ever want somebody to think I'm trying to ride their coattails. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But you got to understand you're not, you, it's not that you have nothing to offer people either. You, you, yeah. you have talent, you have talent, but you also have the marketing side that I mean you've talked about before. There's mm-hmm. there's really not a lose working with you or taking you somewhere or whatever. You get to have the fun side of Macy, but then you get the work mm-hmm. side of Macy that's equally as important as the fun side. You know, yeah, like, and it, I have a pretty good balance. I love some fun, but I will get up in the morning before we go get drunk all afternoon and yes, make us do some work. This is going to be the first trip to Nashville that it is – I am instead of me basing my good time and like I want to have a good time, then I'm going to work around my good time. I am work, right. I am working first, and then yep. I'm having a good time on top of that. So, well, you know, this is my first. This is my first Nashville work trip, and like 
Panama City, I did my own work. You know, I yeah. did the personal stuff that I needed to do. But this is the first time I'll be going to Nashville and actually, you know, sitting down and writing a song with somebody and and working around that. So yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be it's gonna be a good fucking week. I'll tell you that. I'm excited. And I'm, I'm very excited. and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna stay till Saturday too. So uh, Yay! I just got to, I don't I just got to figure out if I want to do that bus thing with y'all. That's the only thing. I don't know if I don't know if that one's for me this time. Well. As much as Where I love Tiffany, much as I love Tiffany and and everybody with Extreme Party Bus of Nashville and all that kind of stuff, because I do, I think the world of them. Uh, I just know on a Friday night, a Halloween weekend, mm-hmm. the traffic's going to be shit. There's yeah, going to be so many people every single place we go. Well, I, I just uh, this is kind of bothersome for me. My anxiety is probably going to get your the anxiety bit. is already bad. You're not even into it. My my anxiety has uh I did uh mushrooms the, the, I told you I was gonna do uh ah. I, I told you I was gonna do them at the beach and then I never yeah you said you were gonna micro dose yeah I well on uh, the two year anniversary of the show a couple weeks ago um I literally had had these peel or not these peels these mushrooms uh in my luggage for since the beginning of September um oh, since I went to Nashville last time and. I was like, I just forgot about them. When I didn't do them at the beach, I was just like, whatever. And uh, to your anniversary, I was like, you know what? Fuck it. They say mm-hmm. they, they say that uh, that with those, like, microdose is supposed to be great for anxiety, depression, all that kind of stuff. That's why I was bringing it up. Um, yeah. Well, the person that uh, had gave them to me um, would not text me back because I didn't know how much to take. I didn't oh, know. God. So I ended up taking way too many. Uh, so I just was like, I just ate the whole bag. Um, oh. I had the best night of my life and my anxiety and my depression has almost been not there since, since the beginning of October, since the, no two- way. I mean, that's what the, the micro dosing and the mushrooms are supposed to show you shit or whatever, let you explore yourself. So to cure all the stuff that the, like the world has trained you to think or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Macy, I shit you not for two and a half hours, maybe a little bit longer, maybe like three. I cried <gasps> and laughed and smiled the entire time. I was in the middle of the party and I realized I didn't want to be in the party anymore. I went outside and I sat on the tailgate of my truck and I turned the, the like my phone speaker on, like just listened to music just on my phone while people were in here playing music. There's probably 20, 30 people in here. And mm-hmm. I just I just realized like I didn't have to be part of the party anymore to enjoy right. myself. Like I could be on the outside looking in. Like it was like I didn't have to fit in, is what they made me feel like. Yeah. Like it That's made awesome. oh, I do it was the coolest shit ever. Cause it just it gave you clarity that. I don't have to go along with what everybody else is doing for me to be successful or for me to be happy. Yeah. Like you and, can do your damn thing. And then, the, and then they even got weirder. Like no one came out and bothered me. Like Reagan came and checked on me. Lily came and checked on me. Uh, I think one or two other people might have at some point in time over that three hour period or whatever, but they were all having a good time and they were not concerned with me. That was also right. that was also amazing for my mental health because it wasn't like anybody was worried about me. They right. were in their own little world being happy. They didn't even notice that I was gone from my own fucking party. Like, yeah, it, that, well, and it, that gave you a chance to kind of sit back and like look at what you have done, and that the whole point of the party was to celebrate that you've been doing this for two years. So you were able to just sit back and look at everybody enjoying it. Like that was a good depiction of what you're doing. Yeah, it was uh it was it was crazy. Like I I honestly it it was just it just opens your eyes to shit. I like now and I I didn't really see too much of anything. I saw a stage coach and horse. Well, that's the only thing I saw. But it was Okay. Yeah, it was kind of trippy. But that's it. Like I didn't I didn't trip ball. Of course I still think that the person that gave them to me gave me just enough for it to be two micro doses. Yeah, probably. And you I, just kind of doubled up. Yeah, so it wasn't too bad. But uh yeah. oh my God, the clarity that you get from it is amazing. 
Well, I'm so scared of trip, but if I ever could, I wish I could, I wish you could control a trip because this sounds stupid, but you saying stagecoach and a, and a horse just like gave me this idea. How cool would it be if you could control your trip and you just like went back into Western time and you were just, everything was Western time. Dude, that would be so awesome. That, that, that would be cool. I think, I think the cool part about it is not controlling it. And it's like, it shows you shit that you don't want to see, but you need to see. Right. Yeah. If you if you could control it, you would just have a good time with it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that. But that's that. True. But that's why the Indians and shit used to do ayahuasca. That, that's why mushrooms are even a thing. Like if people will go watch that documentary that just came out on Netflix a couple months ago, um, that has just blown the fuck up. Oh, are you talking about? Um, it's about like the lady who goes to different people that are researching different forms of medicine, but a lot of it goes back to the ayahuasca and stuff like that. I, I haven't seen that one. This one's called uh, something fungus. It's something fungus. But uh, it literally starts off to where in the 50s, they mm -hmm. had all kind of scientific programs saying that the effects of mushrooms were a cure-all for everything. For I mean, a cure-all. And when I mean, it's real weird but it fucking lines up with everything that big pharma has ever got their hands on yeah when, when people when big pharma found out that this was a cure-all for a lot of shit uh they all of a sudden started went on smear campaigns and bought up patents and bought up all this other stuff the only re it's the same thing with weed though the same shit yeah, the, same, the same shit happened back in the day with that so it makes sense. We've always been taught that weed was bad. It's extremely mm -hmm. great for your mental health for, for mm -hmm. and other things. That's why they give it to cancer patients. Right. Yeah. And, it, and it's the same thing with mushrooms. They're not bad for you. And it, it it's not. Now like heroin, cocaine, all that kind of stuff, meth. Don't Very do it. bad for don't you. Don't do it. Don't do those. Don't, <laughs> don't do, those. do those drugs. Those are bad. So the um the t shirt line that the that Macy Nicole apparel is coming out with. I think I've told you about it. Neon yeah. Swamp. It should be to dubs. It should drop the middle of November. But um there I just finished a shirt yesterday and it's got like it's a brown shirt and it's got like mushrooms like off to the side and then it says the big letters say don't do drugs. So from far away you see that it says don't do drugs. But then when you're looking at the shirt there's little tiny letters like right in front of drugs and it actually says don't do man made drugs. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> exactly. I've I've, <laughs> I've got to open my mind to that shit though cuz I'm telling you growing up I I didn't start drinking until I was 18. I didn't start hard drinking until I was about 20. No, I say hard mm -hmm. drinking. I didn't I, I like getting drunk and Yeah, stuff. yeah, exactly. I got to have a wine cooler at 18. Or so, right, like, yeah. I, I, I didn't and then he'd that. pretend to be drunk. Oh boy, I remember doing that shit. I want to go and beat my ass because now, now, <laughs> now I take fucking Adderall so I don't get drunk. Like it's just. Like, <laughs> I saw a meme yesterday that was like, "I want to go back and kick my ass as a kid for ever getting mad at somebody forcing me to take a nap." And I really? and I was like, you know what? Same thing. I, there's so many things I could go back that I thought was stupid or whatever. That I was just mm -hmm. mad about as it growing up. Um, but also too, I got like some friends in my life that uh they've ruined their lives and they started off with smoking weed. And it's Ooh. and it's just like maybe I wasn't supposed to do anything like that as a as a adolescent. Maybe I had to learn yeah. maybe I had to learn what I could and couldn't do and what was good for you and what wasn't. Well, and you had to learn what you were chasing because back yeah. then we were we would have just been chasing like, you know, having the feeling everybody else had. You there? I do. Yeah. So I. Yeah. Oh, can you hear me? Yeah, it just it fuzzed for a second. Oh, okay. Um, we would have been chasing like what everybody else was doing. You know, I got to smoke yeah. as much weed as so and so smoke. Now it's like, you know, I won't go too much into detail, but if my friends are like, "You want it?" I'm like, "Yep," but just once. And yeah. everybody else might rotate it for another 30 minutes. But I'm like once and I'm going to go clean my house and then I'm going to go to sleep. Yeah. I don't want, I don't want to get high. I want to get, right. I want my anxiety to go away. Exactly. Yeah. That, that's it. Like I don't, I don't even like the feeling of being high. Yeah. If I, if I get too high, I'm like, damn it. I did not mean to do this. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't like that so much. 
Uh, but I do like it when I, I don't care. Like the stuff that would normally bother me is not going to bother me. Uh, I've got to ride to Nashville this weekend with Lily and I'm scared to death that when that bitch drives, I'm scared of her driving. She's horrible. Oh, and, is she as bad as me? Uh, I think she's worse than you. Oh, I think she's probably the worst driver of all time, to be honest with you. And, uh, I'm scared, but it's like, you know what? Maybe I'll go buy me a THC pen before we go. I'll eat one of these edibles that I got. By the way, did you see where Gypsy on my birthday uh, was at the beach gave me some THC edibles from Colorado? Yes, and you were eating them like they were candy. No, no, no. Those were the ones Dustin got me. Uh, oh, yeah. While, no, they, those were Delta 8 or Delta 9. The ones that Gypsy... That's why they didn't do anything for me. Yeah. The ones that Gypsy gave me from Colorado, they're called Wild. Oh, my God. Oh. I, I didn't eat them until I got home from the beach. Like, there was one night I was doing nothing, and I popped one, and they're, like, even got little crystals and shit on top of them. And uh, oh, yeah. I took one, Fancy. and I went to Walmart for something I was going to get. I don't know what it was. But by the time I got back, it started kicking in. I sat in my car in my driveway for like five minutes. Oh, no. And I was just trying to figure shit out. I was just like, do I need to like do something right now? Like my <laughs> what am I doing? My carport is disgusting. <laughs> like I was just trying to figure out, but then I was like, I saw there was like extra tires, and then there's like a road cone that I'd stole one night. Uh, they sit in my carport and it's just like, why are these random things here? You're like, what actually do I do with my life? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. I've been, asking, <laughs> I've been, asking, I've been fucked up asking that a lot lately. Oh man, I felt that. Somebody asked me what I do for a living the other day, and I was like, 29 different things, and I can't explain any of them to you. Um, I don't even know, honestly. The only thing I know is I keep making a way. I haven't lost the house, you know. I keep yeah. making a way. I do a lot. That's all. I know. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm adding one to my plate now. I'm fixing to buy a house, and mm. and I am uh, ugh, I just started looking, and I'm already overwhelmed. Um, that's stressful. Yeah, it's a, it's gonna be what's gonna be. Uh, I figured out what I've paid for rent at my studio and my house. Um, and I'm very grateful for Brutt's properties, by the way. Uh, Mr. Woody and everybody over there, I thank the world of y'all. Y'all are just amazing folks. Um, but in two years, I've paid $48,000 almost in rent on two properties. Oh, hey. and, and I sit there and I wonder why. It's like, how do I not have more money in my savings account? Like, <laughs> how, how is it for one week out of every month? Like, I am broke as fuck. Like, <laughs> Like, I, I don't understand like the rest of them like there's my weeks you know like the the signal bars on your phone that's yes. that's my financial fucking strategy for a month one one, one week i am poor the next week i'm a mm -hmm. little less poor third week is like oh i'm coming up fourth week is like i'm up and then boom boom right back fucking down right back down and just, that is so mean like how the fuck does this happen oh that is so mean um um you know what, though, if you, like, I said this up to my daddy the other day because my septic tank broke, so we had the hurricane and a lot of rain, and it, my, so, I think I told you this, my toilet and my shower backed up, and so my bathroom overflowed with actual shit, and so I called the plumber, he come out, dug up the septic tank, and he discovered that somebody had previously broke the septic tank before I bought this house. And they covered it up with sheets of plyboard and then just put the dirt right back on top of it. So we had all this rain and this plyboard was already rotten and it fell into the septic tank. And when it did, it pushed everything back up into my house. Yeah. So not only did I have to pay the plumber, I had to clean up all the shit. Like the, I had to use gloves and a bucket to put all the shit like out of the bathroom. That took all day. And then I had to get the lid on my septic tank replaced and have it dug up and put back down and blah, blah, And I told daddy, I was like, you know, if I was just renting a house, this would be somebody else's fucking problem. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's the only thing. 
Yeah, that's where uh, I've got like requirements for mine because what I was going to do is I wanted, I always wanted to separate my house and my studio. Right. But there's a good chance that once Gracie turns 18, I won't be living here anymore. But I want to have a property here. I almost want yeah. to, I almost want it to be where if I move to Nashville, I've already paid a couple years of payments on a house and Gracie can move in and she can find a school mm -hmm. that's close to there and have her own place or whatever. Like I, I want to always have a place that's here. Um and I I I gotta have something that's got like a shop in the back that I can build a studio in. Like I still have to have a professional environment. It can't be in my fucking basement or in like an extra room. Um, right. Not not for what the stuff that I want to do. And yeah. uh, so this is going to be a very fucked up process. And I can go and tell you, with like your septic tank, it being your problem, it's still going to be my problem uh, no matter what happens. Because uh, even like renting from somebody, I don't call them and bother them when something messes yeah. up. Yeah. I don't want. I don't. I, I don't want to be a burden. Yeah. I, I don't. I already feel like even though I'm paying, this is how fucked up my head is. I already feel like I'm paying them, but I'm grateful for them letting me use their properties. Right. Yeah. So Which, I, that's I, okay because that just means you're a good ass person. Yeah. Like I just like they don't have to. Right? I mean, they, they could have rented it to somebody else. You know, mm -hmm. that, that's how I kind of look at shit. Um. But anyway, the other thing I was going to tell you all ago. And I made a mm -hmm. note. I made a note to tell you this. Uh, I told you the first thing I was proud of you about was the music. Mm -hmm. Second thing, the other day I texted you. I'm yes. so, I'm so proud that you have decided to to help some families and stuff this Christmas. Yeah, thank you. I I know that I'm a fucking dickhead. I know I know exactly what I am, but I'm tender hearted about that shit, and mm -hmm. I think that shows what a great fucking person you are. Because there are people, well, there's people way bigger than both of us on social media, and you won't see them do a fucking thing for another person ever. Right, yeah, that's true. I, um, well, I guess I look at it so differently because, number one, whenever people say to me, um, you know, great job, you know, that's so, so good of you, you're a good person, blah, blah, I feel like, well, I've been blessed, and I'm able to take care of myself, and I have this following. So I feel like I'm obligated to help people who can't reach out for, you know, help and actually get it the way that I could. I could post on TikTok right now and say, y'all, I can't pay my house payment. And I guarantee you I'd get my house payment four times over by the yeah. amount of people who reached out to help me. You're right. So, you know, so, I mean, and I'm not in that situation. I'm thankful because, you know, I had Garrison when I was 17 and a yeah. lot of his childhood, me and his daddy were back and forth. And so I was alone a lot of his childhood and I had, my own place and I rented granted I rented from my daddy and I easily could have told him like hey I can't afford rent but I had so much pride that I was like I'll never tell him I'm struggling yeah. so at one point I had three jobs and I was like working during the day at a loan office and then I was at a restaurant at night and then there were times I'd coast into the parking lot and be like please at least make $25 in tips so you can put gas in your car or please at least make 75 so you can run to the uh, energy place tomorrow and pay some something on your lights like we didn't have lights a lot of time we didn't have heat a lot of the time two o'clock in the morning I'd be knocking on my mama's door or Tyler's mama's door and being like hey we don't have heat can we stay here tonight because we struggled that bad and I didn't know that energy assistance was a thing did you know the government will pay your light bill if you can no. I had no idea I know that now but um so, yeah, I mean, we just, we struggled really bad. And Christmas time always made me feel like the worst mom because I was in tension. And like yeah. around Christmas time, I would work weekend jobs. So I worked at a chicken farm picking up eggs and I was the only person there that could speak English. And I was the only person there that was three times slower than everybody else that was picking up eggs. And like everyone hated me and I broke eggs a lot and got yelled at and I made $80 a day. And like, it was that, that stuff where, you know, back then I just was like, damn, I am struggling and I'm never going to get out of this and I'm never going to be good enough for my kids. And to be sitting in the life that I have built for my children now, I don't want to get emotional. I, um, I just feel like, why wouldn't I try to help somebody else feel like they are good enough? Because you don't know what anybody's going through, you know? And like, I don't think many people saw 
how badly I wanted to do better for Garrison. And so I didn't get a lot of grace during those times. But when I felt grace was like, there was this one lady, she would come into the restaurant and she'd always give me a $20 tip no matter how much she spent. And one day I, I ran out to her car and I was like, can I stop you and tell you that I'm going to, <laughs> I said, can I stop you and tell you that I'm going to feed my kid and you being so generous is the reason why I can. And I just want you to know that you're a blessing. And she was like, honey, I don't know what it is about you, but the Lord keeps telling me just to reach out and help you. And that is what helped me go through being able to support my kid, you know, and now I have two and it's still just me supporting them, but I have given them a beautiful life and a beautiful childhood. And I just, I would, I would feel like an asshole if I didn't try to reach out to people who are in the situation that I used to be in. So it has felt so good. Like we've already raised $1,500 and we're not even done. And we figured it out. A lot of people wanted me to post videos of whenever I gave the money to the families in need. And I was like, I don't at all want to do that because that's, I don't, I don't think that's a nice thing to do. It's, at it's, all. it's, it's absolutely not. So um, I actually got up with the guidance counselor at my son's school and he goes to a really big um, school and she was, I, I just basically said, look, if I give you $500 gift cards and these little gift baskets and I donate them to the school, will the school distribute them to the families that you know need them? And she was like, yes, absolutely. Like, we'll set up a whole thing. So what we're setting up is Macy Nicole Apparel will just put together these gift baskets that include a $500 gift card, like a Visa gift card. And then we will just donate them to the school and then the school will individually give them to the family. So I won't even know the families that, that do receive the help, but I will know for sure that it goes to families, you know, that the school has been working with that, you know, they just need that, that little bit of extra around the holiday. So it has like, I haven't even done it yet. And I already feel so good. Like every time I, I've opened a bank account specifically for this and every time I look at it, I'm just like, this is so cool. That's going to be a kid's Christmas who mama probably was like, you know, you're getting t-shirts and socks for Christmas from Santa Claus. And I feel so bad about that. And now she's going to be able to, we're doing it before black Friday and I'm doing that so that they can get really good deals if they choose to. So now she might go get a bicycle or she might go buy a trampoline and her kids have a trampoline that Christmas, you know? So it has felt really good. And I'm really thankful for everybody that has already been a part of it. It's been awesome. I'm extremely proud of you, and uh, you just made me fucking cry too. By the way, I'm, I'm glad, sorry. I'm glad I got. <laughs> I didn't I, mean to. I'm glad I got these glasses on because you couldn't see it. But uh, no, but that that's the thing. That's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. That, that is what you are supposed to do. That is why I am confident that whatever you do in this life, you are going to succeed in it. You've learned the so. <laughs> you've you've well you've learned the lessons that you need to learn in life. You've learned them the hard way. That usually mm -hmm. makes you the toughest fucking person. That usually, yeah. but it also makes you the same way to where you value something more than the next person that had something given to them. And you, you doing stuff like this, I'm telling you, this will be the seventh year that I've done it. And I, I've said every year I wasn't going to do it again. Every single year I said, I'm not doing it again because it just, it's not for what people think for it's because of the excess people that message me or hit me up. And I can't, after I say that we're doing this, I can't do anymore. Like I, I can't, I feel like then it's just, it's just too much. Um, right. That's, that's why I started ours a little bit earlier this year too, but you'll always want to do this. Yeah. And, and I've got it down pat now to, with the families, there's some of them that I stay in touch with all year. There, there, mm -hmm. there, there's some that, you know, I know their situation and they're welcome to the studio if they ever want to come hang out or anything like that. Um, I, I don't never post their stuff on social media. I, right, because that's just not nice. Well, I think that's why some people do it. For me, yeah. for, for folks like me and you, I think I never went with that. I'm not the person who's going to sit here and say that we ever went without. We might not have had the nicest shit ever, the nicest house right. or whatever growing up. We were lower class medium class to lower class most of my childhood uh there was a time period 
in high school where my, my parents got strung out on drugs that it was extremely bad. But there was also mm-hmm. a time in high school and middle school that my dad's business was probably worth almost a million dollars at one point in time. And he could buy whatever the fuck he wanted to. Um, yeah. So like I, I've been on, I've been, I have never went without. Yeah. And I cannot imagine what it would be for me to be able to sit here for an hour or two and have the opportunity to help somebody. And I would rather not fucking do it just because it's like what I can go do something for myself. That that's right. where, that's where I don't get so many people on social media. I, I don't. Just in danger last year. There's a kid that was in need. Uh, I can't mm-hmm. remember. I cannot remember what it was. If the kid might have had can't. I really don't remember what it was. He took time out of his schedule and they raised like fifty thousand dollars in a couple days for this kid for, oh, his, wow. for his hospital bills or something like i can't it was something that the kid really needed yeah. and, that, and that's where even though i think justin's a fucking good guy that's where he earned my respect i knew he wasn't right. a piece of shit person now there's people i see on there all the time man and they just they're not gonna have everlasting success not because they're not talented not because they're not funny not because whatever because they don't have a heart like you do I, they don't yeah. they don't have that little extra you can't just be funny you can't just right. be, you can't just be one thing you have to be relatable you have to be real you know how many people wouldn't have just told that story that you just told yeah or if they told it they would tell it for attention right yeah it's clear that you don't ever do anything for attention you do it to share and help that that's yeah. a, that's a quality that a lot of these people don't have well and i've told you about <clears throat> back whenever my TikTok was a bit smaller but um it was whenever I first bought this house actually I still kind of felt like I was failing my kids because we were still kind of struggling and um I got to a point where I did not even want to be alive anymore and I you know I went through that on my own but then I started sharing I started talking about it on TikTok and the way I started talking about it was not y'all I want to die it was y'all guess what yesterday I was sitting in my shower and I truly wanted to be dead. And I got up this morning and I got my kids ready for school and I went to work and I got excited about my chickens because I had moved my chickens from a little pen to their big coop in the backyard. And I went out and looked at them that morning and I was like, look at y'all, you're in a whole new world. Isn't this so great? And yeah, it's just my little chickens. But the thought crossed my mind, like if I would have, let myself do what I wanted to do last night I would not be here to enjoy the fact that my chickens are living in a a nicer coop right now and that's so small but whenever I shared that so I I didn't get I was scared I was going to get like okay here we go sad story you know she she wants attention blah blah but I shared it anyway because I wanted to make the point like you might right now feel like you don't want to be alive but just wait until the sun rises tomorrow because you might find a reason tomorrow to be really glad that you're here and yeah with the you know you're go ahead yeah you go ahead you go ahead finish i was gonna say you know you're saying like you know that i that i do it not for attention but because i'm a good person and i don't i hate to be like oh yeah i'm a good person it really is it comes down to conviction i don't think it comes down to having a good heart i really don't because people can be complete assholes and still be a good person at heart but yeah, like you <laughs> I think it comes down to conviction you know I felt convicted because I did feel bad that I wanted to die that day you know there's all these things I have to live for I do feel convicted now because I used to be so low with my children you know or with my my kid and I used to be you know so broke and struggling so bad and now I'm successful well, I wouldn't say successful but now I'm I've, I've given my kids a good a good happy life I feel convicted because I've succeeded and some people, some people have it way harder than I do. Some people don't have the opportunities that I have had. So it's really not like, oh, I'm a good person. I'll give to whoever I can. It's more like, cool, man, I used to struggle like that. And I needed somebody to hold my hand too. So here's my hand for a second. You know, let me do what I can. Yeah. Uh, with depression and stuff like that, you always got to enjoy the little victories. It's one of the things totally. that I want, the, the little victories. And a common misconception with it is you probably didn't want to die. You were just tired of living. Amen. Yeah. yeah. I didn't want my kids to not have a mom. Yeah, exactly. My family. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. I, every, when you get a grasp on that, like you're being, even though you're, I, I, I know you're dealing with your depression and stuff in your own way anyway. Yeah. Um, but that opening up and sharing that with people and you helping people at the same time, you're helping yourself too. And, 100%. and that there's something special about the people that can take a topic like suicide or depression mm -hmm. and take the taboo away from it to where yeah. other people all of a sudden feel like they can open up and talk about it. I've got, I've got a very good friend. I cannot wait next week to introduce you to this person. Um, but every one of our conversations is about him being a veteran and all the stuff that he has gone through and how mm -hmm. he, he's starting to open up with everybody, his family, his wife, his, his kids, his everybody, because me and him have had these conversations and he's helping people now and it's helping him by helping people. And, yeah. there's, and there's just something about it. You didn't go through your trauma or your bullshit shit and you're still here for no reason. When, right. Yeah. Like you, you're supposed to, like I, when I first started this show to uh, whatever it was to over two years ago now, I, I wanted it to be clear that, there's warriors in this world and there's preachers in this world. The reason I got like even this tattoo on my chest and arm and everything is I want to remind myself every morning. I'm not a preacher. I'm a warrior. I'm supposed to be battle scarred. I'm supposed to be chipped away. I'm supposed to be half ass yeah. broken because everybody that is going to need to hear what I have to say is the same fucking way. I want you to know fucked up. People don't judge fucked up people. Amen. <laughs> That you you trauma bond, you get close, you normalize the shit you've been through because you always think I'm the only one that's gone through this. You right. all you always think it. So when you have people like you that open up on social media and they do it the right way, not attention seeking, but just literally saying, Hey, I just fucking went through this. Yeah. That somebody's gonna see that or somebody's gonna hear that and be like, fuck, I did too. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not the only one. Yeah, that's the goal, too. It's like, yeah. hey, man, I feel this way. I know there's people. There's got to be. I'm almost at 700,000 now. There's, I guarantee you half of them have felt just as low as I have at some point. I'll guarantee you save somebody's life. You just don't know it. But, and that really is the goal. I don't ever want to be the person that, you know, I used to make my social media look like I was perfect, and I did not. Nobody, when I got my divorce, so many people were commenting like, what y'all look so happy da, 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 da. I don't want to do that again I don't no. want it to be like yeah y'all didn't know that I was struggling because when I did start posting about my struggles I think I was at like 70,000 followers when I actually started posting like I'm having a hard time um it was COVID and I was home with my kids all of a sudden and I'm not meant to be a stay-at-home mom because I get overwhelmed and stressed <laughs> out and you know, I was like, I was sharing that. I was like, y'all, I don't know how y'all stay home, mom, and do it because I hate everything about me right now. Like, I, I am so, I'm having such a hard time. And that was the first time I ever saw that people related so much and it helped them because there were so many people that reached out and were like, girl, we are dealing with the same thing. The kids are home all day. I'm working from home. I don't think I'm doing good enough, you know, and that started it. That's what started me being like, shit, I'm helping people. Keep this going. This feels great. Yeah, see, I think there's only a few kinds of people that do social media, and they either realize what they're doing or they don't. Some people are just a distraction from everyday life, and that's mm -hmm. all it is. Like, even the girls, there's women that I follow on social media that are half-dressed, shakes their ass or whatever, and you're literally a distraction, a one-minute mm -hmm. distraction from whatever is going on in my life when I see your video. Then I scroll to the next one. And I can relate to the next one because they're mm -hmm. actually talking about some real shit. So you're yeah. either relatable and that's why somebody follows you or you're a distraction. You're not the type of person that posts stuff that's just distracting. Right. But, so you're the people that follow you, the people that keep up with you are relating to you. So yeah, you're definitely, yeah. Helping, you're definitely helping people. I feel like I have some of the most loyal followers because like I'll even get messages like, you know, I just got a creator account on Snapchat. And so I sometimes fail to realize that I'm getting more attention on Snapchat. And so I'll get messages like, it's been 16 hours. Are you okay? <laughs> well, yeah, I just haven't posted on Snapchat, but they're loyal, you know, they're, they're checking on me. 
That tickles me. That, that, <laughs> that, 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 that's funny. Um, yeah. I'm ready to see you next week. I miss you. I, 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 I forget how much I miss you. Uh, but anyway, so we'll probably cut it there. That seems like a good way to end it. Tell them again where they can get your song, go pre-save it and everything. Tell them all that so, good shit. So TikTok is Macy Nicole Walker and Instagram is as well. Um, and my website link is in my bio on both. And the pre-save is right up there at the top. It'll be available on Spotify, Apple Music, I think Pandora, YouTube Music, like all the, pretty much all the, all the, what do you call it? Music platforms. <laughs> yeah, and you- then also, if, sorry, <laughs> if you want to, um, donate instead of participating in the auctions for the Mason and Apparel Christmas auctions. Um, there have been a lot of people who don't want to purchase. They just want to donate and that's perfectly fine. My cash app and Venmo are in the bio as well. And if you want it to be a donation to the auction, just put donation in your um, note and I'll just put it straight in the bank account. We've gotten a lot of it. What is your, what is your goal with it? Um, I don't really have a goal because I've already met it. So now I'm just like, okay, as many families as possible. So I started off, my goal was to give one family $500 because I genuinely did not believe so many people would be willing to help as much as they have. Um, We hit 500 almost immediately. And then we were doing the second drive. We had one guy donate 200 and Trey Lewis actually did a, um, he bought a shirt pile. And I had said, like, y'all, I'm, I'm actually kind of sad that I'm doing this one because this is one of my favorite T-shirts. But, you know, for a good cause. So here you go. So he bought that one at double what I was asking for so that I could get my shirt back. And it went for a good, good cause. So um, that they met our goal that day. So we've now gotten $500 for three families. So now I'm just like, let's, let's just fund as many families as we can. Hey, keep going with it. Keep going with it. I'm so excited. We're, I'm trying to do two auctions a week because it yeah. seems like that is working out. We've got people during the week and then people on the weekend. So. Yeah. I'm definitely fucking up with mine. Uh, I just, it's hard for me to sit on the lives anymore. And it is hard. The live yeah, part is really hard. Yeah. I'm, I'm almost, it's just really hard for me. So I'm fixing to take on like, I'm, trying to talk to a couple of different people and include their social medias or their, their podcasts or mm-hmm. whatever. We, we did like, they told me I did 23 families last year. And oh I, God, I love that. So and much. I, and I didn't realize I'd done that many. Like I thought yeah. I, like I was telling people, I was like, well, I think we did 10, but I don't, <laughs> I, I don't, I don't keep track of it. Like I, I don't, I like when the families come here because we always do like an event. And uh, we'll do one on December the 17th um, just for the families to come and pick up their stuff, mm-hmm. pick up their gift cards their clothes, their money and everything that uh, each one of the families get. But uh, I didn't realize, like, and it's, and you, before it's all said and done, you'll help so many people. Yeah. And, and that's the goal. And it's just going to be like, it's going to be the best fucking feeling ever. Just yeah, I'm really excited. Just don't get overwhelmed with it. Just don't just don't get overwhelmed with it. Cause uh Yeah. So I was already trying to plan the one in Nashville and then I finally came to terms with myself. I was like, you are not gonna be able to handle holding an auction while you're in Nashville. Because I'll have to have the stuff with me physically and then I'll have to create yeah. the the tags and I just I won't be able to do that. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, what we might do is one of the days do one. Like maybe mm-hmm. Maybe me and you, because we're right there at the same of what we give families. Each mm-hmm. and every, maybe me and you just get together one of the days that we're doing it, take about an hour. And yeah. we, we do it together at the same time, and then we split it. And I think I think we could probably do it. We could probably make a game out of it between the two of us, just take an hour out yeah. of one of our days. Because I've got to – I'm supposed to do three while I'm there. I'm supposed to do three before I leave because I haven't been doing it. Um, or we're <laughs> gonna, Or we're going to be completely behind schedule. So. Uh, yeah. But anyway, all right. Well, I love you. I will see you next week. Thank you for doing the show. Y'all all please go look at her song coming out. Share the shit out of it. Make videos with it. All that good shit. Please do. I, I know we are. I know me and some of the guys that you always share our stuff. And uh, we, yeah. we're, we're kind of <laughs> talking about it. So I guess we got to we gotta make some videos and shit with your sound uh, and, your, and your song and all that kind of stuff. Because uh, that's another thing I absolutely love about you. You never ask for anything in return. You always help everybody that you come in contact with so 
with this right here, I well, think all, I think all of us need to fucking get off our ass and help push it as much as possible. Hey, I would really appreciate it, but you're right. It pays to be a good person. So. Hey, there you go, <laughs> fucker. All right. Well, I will see you uh, in the next couple of days. All right. I love you. Love you too. I will see all y'all later.